<laughs> hey everybody, it's Justin. Welcome back to another episode of Bassin and More. So behind the camera today, I have my amazing wife, Mikkel. Say hi. Hey guys. So unfortunately, I actually started winterizing the camper already and I got so far and realized, wait, what am I doing? I should make a video of this because there's a lot of you guys out there like myself that might be new to campers and this is your first time winterizing. So I wanted to go through this and make sure you guys understood how to do this as well too. It'll help out a lot. So we'll start first with some of the tools we're gonna need. Um, let me step back just a little bit. Actually, what I wanna do is if you guys wanna check out about the camper, I'll link down below in the description a video of the camper where we do a full walkthrough showing you everything about the camper. Um, we also have another video I'll link down below that shows my top 10 essentials on the outside and her top five essentials on the inside as some of those things that we use in this video will come into play for winterizing the camper as well too. And we'll discuss those as we go. So some of the tools you're gonna need today is you're gonna need a mop bucket. You're gonna need just a little garden hose. Um, you're going to need your filter wrench, which this should come with your camper. You're going to need an 11 16 socket. You're going to need two adjustable wrenches. And you're going to need a couple bottles of uh, marine uh, slash RV antifreeze. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that both your black tank and gray tank are thoroughly flushed and empty. Now, we did this at the end of our last camping trip this last weekend at Lagoon, so it's already done. Again, apologies that I got so far ahead of things, but anyways, you'll take that clear connection that goes on your sewer hose here, which I discussed in one of my previous videos, like I said, linked below. Um, you'll put that on and you'll put on your um, black tank flush right here, and you'll actually flush the black tank multiple times, making sure that you've got everything coming out. I think I flushed it probably a total of five times before we unhooked, um, because each time I'd open it up, you'd still see a little bit more toilet paper or something come through. So I flushed it five times before nothing came through. So black tank is thoroughly flushed. One of the other things we did is we put some dishwasher detergent down in our sink, not regular dishwashing soap that you would use um, to wash your dishes in the sink or your hands, but in the dishwasher itself. And the reason being is it doesn't set up as much as the other soap. But you put a bunch of that down your drain. The liquid kind. The, yeah, there you go, the liquid kind. Put a bunch of that down your drain and fill your um, gray tank about half full before you head home. And what that does is it takes all the food and stuff that you've washed down your sink doing dishes, breaks it all up so that when you flush the gray tank, it gets a lot cleaner, which is something we also did as well too. So both tanks are completely empty, flushed, and clean. So that's the first thing you're gonna wanna do. Um, second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull your fresh water valve right here. Huh, look at that. Got a little bit in there. <laughs> and make sure that it's completely empty. Good thing we did that, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, we want all that water out. Once we do that, um, then we're going to go actually back around to this other side. So once we've guaranteed that we've got all the fresh water out and we've flushed our tanks, we're gonna open up our heater door here. <clears throat> and inside the heater door is you have this pressure valve right here. We're gonna want to open that pressure valve and that's gonna relieve any water. Then you should get water that come out. And remind you, do not open that if the water is hot, if you've had your hot water heater on. It will come out really hot, it will burn you, it will be bad. So make sure your water is cool before you open it. But you're gonna open that, you will get some water that come out. While that's still open, that's why you take your 11 16 socket you're gonna put it on this right here and you're gonna take this out. Now this is your heating element bar. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact technical term for it, but a whole bar will come out um, and your water will pour out. It'll take a couple minutes, but with this open, it'll help it flush out as well too and you'll completely drain your whole water heater. Once you're done, put that back in, make sure that's good and tight. You can see, like I said, I already did it, sorry. But, so we'll put that back in and then we're gonna close that valve once we're done. And then we're going to go into the camper and right here as you walk in the door is a cupboard. Now I've already removed, there's going to be a little thing right here blocking it, I've already removed it. But inside, and I don't know if you can see very well, I'm going to get flashlight on there. So inside there's two valves, one valve right up here, can you see it, and then one valve down in here. 
Come on, please. You can see that. You're going to switch both those valves so they bypass the hot water heater. That is critical because as you flush the antifreeze through, you don't want the antifreeze going in your hot water heater. So I have already done that again. Sorry. <laughs> so once we've done that, we now know that we've bypassed the water heater and everything else. There's one more step to make sure we've got all the water out, which is on the opposite side of the camper again. Oh, and this, sorry. And this is where you're gonna need both of your wrenches here. As you see here, it says low point drain. Now underneath, and I'll do this part for you, baby. If you get underneath the camp, but you gotta crawl underneath, but you'll see right here is both your cold water and hot water low point drain. So you'll put one of your wrenches here, one of your wrenches here, and you're gonna loosen both of those, and that'll drain any remaining water. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So you'll use those, loosen those, and once you do, that'll drain any remaining water within the lines out of the camper. Once it's done draining, which there shouldn't be a lot, just a little bit, go ahead and cap those back off. And now you've done everything you can to get as much water out of the lines as you possibly can. So this is where um, we're gonna now go inside the camper. <clears throat> and this is where your mop bucket and your filter wrench is gonna come in handy. So if you follow me in, And, as a little note, slide out does have to be out to do this. But, in this bottom drawer here, as again, I've already removed the board that's there for convenience. You can see here's your filter. We have to remove that, and the reason why we bring the bucket is because that is full of water right now. So as we remove this, we might spill a little bit of water, but the remaining of the water in the filter is going to go in here. So, one little turn loosens it, and like I said, we should get some water pouring out of here, which that's okay. Oh, good. Not that bad. And we're going to pull that filter down with it. And like I said, this is where your bucket comes in handy. So we're just going to dump the water and the filter out. Then, we're just going to put this canister back in place. And... Again, once you've got it in there, that's where we take the wrench and we tighten it up. So now, that's good to go for any freeze as well too. Now there's one more step inside this cupboard, which is on the outside, you had your city water on one side and your flush on the other side. And so you can see this valve right here is going to my fresh tank. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna flip that to where it shuts off the fresh tank and is now hooked up to that hose line. So now, when we hook the antifreeze up, it'll pull through here. So now we're gonna go back out on the outside. So this is where we're gonna need this. And um, I winterized my boat earlier today, so I have plenty of buckets of this left over. I don't know how much it's gonna take yet. I'm guessing two, two and a half um, buckets, but let's go find out. Oh, I didn't bring my hose over, did I? Oh. <laughs> Oops, got to get the hose. Things you forget. A lot of back and forth. Another critical part, yes. There is a lot of back and forth on them. Okay, so as I said, one of them here you can see, and I don't know why I opened it, is your city water connection and then your antifreeze inlet. And that's why we flip that bypass valve, is so that it bypasses from our, actually our fresh water in the front to this. So we're going to put our hose in here, and we're just going to twist it on good. And this is just a little piece of hose that I have that goes from the house to my little hose reel that we use year round. Um, and due to the fact that the end is too big to fit in the bottle, I cut one of the bottles open so that it'll fit in. And like I said, I was winterizing the boat already. And so I had a little bit left over after winterizing the boat. So we're gonna start with that bottle and work our way up. Um, and I do know that this first process, this first step, We'll actually use a bit of antifreeze. So we just put the hose in. Now we got to go back around again. <laughs> of course. To come back around, all we're doing here is we're turning on our water pump. You can hear it already starting to suck fluid through. 
Now we're going to run back over to our bottle. And that bottle should probably already be empty. Look at that. So it's already sucking through. So we're going to open our next bottle. And we're just going to pour this in here. And this is the easiest way for me to do it. If I didn't have that end on there, I can just quickly switch from one bottle to the other. But due to the fact that I have that end and we're still gonna use it, that piece of hose, this is what works for me. So just put that back in and you're- Now that we've got all of that done, so we're gonna open our sink right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the cold water and you should still see some water coming out, but we're just gonna let it run until we start to see antifreeze coming out. There it is. So now you can see the antifreeze coming through, good and strong. So now we're gonna run the hot water as well too, antifreeze. So now we have winterized the sink, the kitchen sink. So now we gotta go to the bathroom. And we're gonna do the same thing with the bathroom sink. We turn on the cold first, antifreeze. Turn on the hot. Antifreeze. Cool. Then we got to do the toilet. So we're going to flush the toilet. Tell same thing. We got a bunch of antifreeze coming out of that. Looks good. Oh, and it sounds like we just ran out of our other bottle. So that's so far just one and a quarter bottle. Mm -hmm. Again, sorry, this is what kind of works for me. So this might work for a lot of people. This well, if you have the hose end cut off, it's so much easier to just swap from one bottle to the other. Mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna go pay an extra little bit for a hose when I can just do this. Yeah. I am cheap guys, I'm so That's cheap. all right, uh, me too, it's a good thing. More money for toys. Exactly, toys and weekend fun. Yep. Okay, so let's go back in and finish where we were at. We were in the toilet. Okay, so toilet, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it off, but there you go. Got some good antifreeze in the toilet. Now we got to do the same thing with the shower. Cold first. Okay. Then do our hot. And there's our hot. And you also have to do the shower head. So we're going to turn that back on. And voila. Shower head. And it does make a little bit of a mess. You gotta make sure your drain's open so everything drains out. <laughs> so now we've done um, the toilet, the shower, the bathroom sink, the inside sink. There's one more thing we still have to do, which I'm sure we gotta go get the keys for. <laughs> to your outdoor shower. Oh yeah, we have not used this. We have not used this shower at all. It's nice to have. Because we actually have, oh, and we still gotta do that hose too. Oh, we good haven't thing done we're that. thinking about this. So we have to do that. So yeah. same thing, we're gonna turn on that cold water and we're gonna let it run until antifreeze comes out. Hot water. And I'm not doing a lot because we're outside here, but. And there you go. Now your shower is winterized as well too, but, but Rockwood Mini Lights still have one more water outlet. So let's go back over here. I almost completely forgot about it, but you have your outdoor hose connection right here, which I'm not sure if we can get this to work. I actually lost the little twisty piece right here that opens this. So we're gonna try it anyway just to see if we can get this winterized. But you connect this up here. I need two hands to do this apparently. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn on the cold. And let's see if we can actually get this to work, which it's not going to. So I'm gonna turn it off actually. And I'm gonna remove this because my end broke. No, turn on that cold until the antifreeze comes out. There we go. And then turn on the hot until the antifreeze comes out. And voila, that's it. We have now winterized all of our lines and are ready to put our camper away. And let's go back over and let's see how many bottles 
it took. And we're right at the bottom of this. So essentially it took just barely over two bottles. So if you were to buy three bottles, you could probably get away with two bottles because I kind of ran that toilet a little longer than I really needed to. Same with the sink, stuff like that. So you could probably get away with two bottles, but on the safe side, I would just buy three bottles of this stuff. This way, you know that you're good. As you can see, I've got a little bit left over, which is good for us, but all in all, I'd rather be safe than sorry when it comes to putting this thing away for the winter and know that all of the lines are flushed out good with antifreeze and I'm not gonna have any issues at all. So there is one more thing that I have not done yet, but I'm not gonna do on camera, but let's go up front and I'll show you two more things. My bad, two more things. I'm gonna take the cover off and I'm gonna close both propane tanks, making sure that they are closed. Then I'm also gonna remove both of my batteries and I'm gonna put them in the garage and I'm gonna leave them on a maintainer all winter long. And the reason being is the very first year I had my last camper, I did not remove the batteries and I had to replace both batteries after the winter because cold actually damages battery cells. So by putting them in the garage, leaving them on a maintainer through the winter, your expensive batteries will still last you years and work good for next season. So I'm not gonna do that on video, but I will take those out and put those in the garage before I take this thing back. So that's all I had. Um, again, I will list everything that I use today in the description below uh, with an Amazon link to help you guys out. And if there's anything I missed, please say so. But I'm pretty sure for my first time winterizing my 2021 Rockwood Mini Light, I think we got it. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And thanks for tuning in. See you guys in the next one. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.